Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's having a nice week and uh, a little bit of a chilly start to the morning. And uh, what I thought we'd do in today's video, I did camp out overnight last night. Hence the reason for sounding a little bit nasally and sniffy, plus I've also got a cold. What I thought we'd do is talk about the sleeping bag which I've been using. Now I've showed this in previous videos when I did the last overnight uh, video and that kind of thing. And the bag itself is a snug pack sleeping bag, so it's not overly expensive. But for this time of year, it's been absolutely perfect, so I thought we'd run through the spec and just give you a closer look at it. So the sleeping bag itself is a part of their Elite range, and you can get them from the Elite 1 all the way to the Elite 5. So the Elite 1 being for the summer use and that kind of thing, all the way up to the Elite 5, which is what they're classing for winter use. So this one here is an Elite 3, and it does go down to what they say, minus 5, but I do take no notice of that really. Last night I got down to around about zero, you know, and I was uh, relatively warm in it. So just talking about the fabrics, Snug Pack build these sleeping bags out of various different fabrics. You've got a different fabric as the face fabric. You've also got a different fabric just on the inside, and you've also got uh, another fabric just on the inside of that again. So when you're buying sleeping bags, you know, it can be quite confusing if you haven't uh, brought one before. <coughs> you know, you can see them from anywhere from £20 up to £500. But this one here is a mid-price sleeping bag. Snug pack say it's around about £140, but if you look around, you know, you can pick these up for around like 80 quid. So it is a nice mid-price sleeping bag. So the outer fabric on the sleeping bag, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it is a, a ripstop kind of fabric and it's, uh, it is made out of nylon. It's made out of what they call Paratex and it's a micro fabric. So it's a very hard wearing fabric, it's windproof, it's waterproof and it's also breathable. So the last thing you want is to be you know, getting warm inside your sleeping bag and then perhaps it's cool on the outside and then you can get a condensation build up on the inside. At least if the sleeping bag's breathable it's going to get rid of a, you know, quite a bit of that kind of moisture. So just on the inside, they've used two different fabrics one of them which you can see and then another one bonded at the back of this but uh, the main fabric which is used again is another Paratex fabric and this one here again is highly breathable and highly wickable so any moisture that you're creating through sweat <coughs> is going to pass through all the way through the sleeping bag and out through the face fabric and then just bonded to the back of this here's another fabric what they call reflector therm and it's got uh, silver particles in it which again is going to reflect back any kind of heat so just whilst I'm on this side with the zipper you can only get these sleeping bags with a left hand zip, which is perfect for a right handed person. Unfortunately, if you're left handed, then you're going to have to make do or you know, perhaps look around for another kind of sleeping bag if you do have a job with the left hand zip. But uh, one thing which they do talk about quite heavily is this baffle system which comes with it. And again, this is a, a real good idea. You usually see this on top end sleeping bag, so it's nice to uh, get it on a sleeping bag like this as well. And the idea behind it is the zip itself can be zipped up in two different positions. I'll just bring the camera around just for a better kind of camera angle. So at the moment I've got it fastened on the top zipper, which means when I fasten the zipper up, the bag itself is actually closed to the maximum. But perhaps it's summertime or perhaps you're a bigger guy, you just want that little bit of extra movement in the sleeping bag. What you can do is unzip the zipper all the way to the bottom so that it comes out of the zip there and then you can actually just place it in to the zip it just like so excuse cold fingers and then you can zip that up again So as you can see there, there's that top zipper, and we've now zippered into the bottom. And it just gives you around about three or four inches of expandable panel just at the side there. So again, like I said, in the summertime, if you want a bit more movement in the sleeping bag, or perhaps you're a bigger guy. But for me, it's perfect, certainly this time of year, to zip it all the way up. Then it gives you that extra thickness of fabric just at the back of the zipper there, which is going to retain the heat and stop you losing any heat throughout the zipper. So a real good idea, very very useful and then just on the inside here they have got just a small little stowaway pocket there just for things like your keys, your mobile phone or perhaps you put hand warmers in it that kind of thing if it is uh, you just want to retain just a bit more warmth and then just as we come up 
to the top of the sleeping bag or where the head section is you can see there that there's a couple of pull cords there or draw strings one of them being so that you can draw the hood and also the neck section just around just to retain the heat perfect for last night and then just on the inside there you've also got a shoulder or neck baffle which you can draw up again just to stop you losing any heat just out of the top of the sleeping bag so one of the features which I do like with the sleeping bag just have to bring the camera back down to the bottom is this little simple idea here so what they've done you put a couple of D-rings either side and then just at the bottom of the sleeping bag you've also got a couple of clips so the length of the sleeping bag when it's fully opened up like that is 220 centimeters or seven foot two and then what you can actually do if you're a little bit shorter you can just clip up the clips what you've actually done there has reduced the size now and that's now down to 188 centimeters or six foot two so again you know good length for, the, for most people perfect for me what it allows you to do is double up that thickness of the bottom of the sleeping bag there so again on a cold night it just means that you've got a double layer just under the foot there which is going to help keep your feet warm you know me personally my feet seem to be uh, the thing that suffers the most so again you know that's a, that's a perfect solution Then if we just take a look at how the foot section has been constructed you can see there that it's what's called a box foot so they haven't sewn the sleeping bag completely together like so it's just going to allow just a little bit more air circulation around your feet which is going to make things a lot more comfortable and again if you're going to be wearing boots inside the sleeping bag it's just going to give you just a bit more room so we just undo the sleeping bag all the way and just turn sleeping bag inside out you can see there that just on the inside they give you the, this extra piece of fabric here which is a durable waterproof fabric again it's just going to stop your sleeping bag from getting you know too mucked up if you are wearing your boots inside it just means then that you can wipe it off and keep it clean so just on the inside here at the bottom you have got a couple of loops which have been sewn in and those are so if you want to put a sleeping bag on and fasten it to the inside of the bag you can do that just by attaching it to them loops that just leads me on to the other thing you know the sleeping bag is classed pretty much as a three season sleeping bag so if it is that you want to add a bit more warmth to it again using a sleeping bag liner whether a silk or a fleece bag liner or perhaps add another half a season or season to the bag and then probably the most important part but the part that you can't see is the filling of the sleeping bag now it's a synthetic sleeping bag and if you use what they call their softy range of filling they use that on the top end sleeping bags and also their jackets and unlike a lot of the cheaper sleeping bags where the fibers are very very long with these kind of softy sleeping bags they're very short fibers which all mesh together which retain a lot of the warmth and also the sleeping bag itself gets wet it does uh, also retain quite a lot of the heat and then just underneath the sleeping bag just to stop any moisture from creeping through i've just got a cheap tarp here then a self-inflating mattress i do prefer the self-inflating mattresses compared to the roll mats it just means then you can compress them down you can keep them in your sleeping bag your sleep system that kind of thing or just tuck them away just inside your rucksack and this one here again is a three season mat if it was really really cold you'd go with a four season but i do tend to find that the three season you know does suit me you know so i don't really need to go any bigger and carry much more weight so just whilst we're on the subject of weight the weight of the sleeping bag itself it isn't an ultralight sleeping bag so if you're into ultralight hike, hiking and that kind of thing then perhaps you might find it just a little bit too heavy but uh, all the spec and everything is on the bag itself and the overall weight of the bag is 1600 grams or 56 ounces and it does come in this compression stuff sack when it's packed down it packs down to around about 10 inches by 9 inches and again you can really can compress it down and just use the compression straps now one thing which I do find which I don't like about it 
And a lot of sleeping bags, they sometimes give you a handle, which just goes just across the bottom of the bag there. So it's easier then just to grab hold of the handle and pull the sleeping bag out. But for this, I suppose, you find the information more important, but it's something which I do miss. It's a little bit awkward just grabbing the side straps and pulling it out, but hey, that's how it is. So like I say, and everything's on here. It does tell you the comfort range, the lows, the sizes, you know, when it's compressed, when it's folded up and that kind of thing. So again, I will leave all the links in the description box to uh, Snugpack's website and then you can check it all out. So there, we have you guys, just a quick look at one of the Snugpack sleeping bags, like I say, this one being the Elite 3. And just whilst uh, we're talking about Mummy's sleeping bags, which is obviously this is what it is, it's uh, broader at the top and tapers down at the bottom. A lot of people say that they don't like them because they can't turn around in them. Now put me right if I'm wrong, but uh, my understanding is once you're in the sleeping bag, they have to turn and turn with the sleeping bag instead of trying to turn inside the sleeping bag. You know, and I've never found any kind of problems. I know I'm not the biggest person in the world, but you know, just rolling with the sleeping bag itself as opposed to trying to turn inside it just means that you're not going to get tangled up inside the sleeping bag itself. Like I say, you know, for 85 quid, if it is that you're looking for a mid price sleeping bag, something that is nice and reliable, then I'm sure you won't go far wrong. And again, with sleeping bags, you know, everyone is warm or cold compared to the other person. These kind of things I do find suit me. If it is that you're a cold person, then, you know, you may find this time of year that you perhaps want to go with a warmer sleeping bag, or like I say, perhaps use a sleeping bag liner. So just a real quick video, guys. I just uh, thought I'd run through it before I pack the stuff away. They have got quite a bit of rain out for today, so I'm just going to get things packed up and get myself back off home. So like always, you just leave and say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time. You take care and I'll see you again.